Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jake, and in this video, I want to discuss a little bit about how I approach plugins in the NeoVim ecosystem, how I kind of vet plugins, how I install them, configure them, where I put that configuration. Uh, in a previous video, which I will link uh, maybe up here or in the description, uh, we went, you know, we went into how to install NeoVim, and I I provided a few like general settings here. Uh, we went through installing a tool called Vim Plug, where you can manage plugins, uh, and we installed a single plugin, which was just a color scheme. So we really didn't go that far, and I want to expand on that because I think uh, I have a lot of interesting stuff that I've learned in the last few weeks. But before we do that, I think we need to take a step back and discuss Lua. And uh, the reason I want to take a step back is I was going down this rabbit hole, I was filming a video about like, oh, here's all the plugins I use, here's how I configure them. And I spent like 20 to 30 minutes talking about Lua and how I like set up the folder structure and stuff, because it's kind of important. So that's what I wanted to discuss in this video. There's not a lot of daylight left. I'm, you know, 5 p.m. and sun's going down, I hate it. But uh, hopefully we can knock this out quickly and uh, you guys can kind of get an idea of where this series of videos on NeoVim is gonna go. So uh, we only have an init.vim. I'm in my .config slash nvim directory. And in that directory, I have, you know, these are, uh, this is where vim plug installs plugins. This is vim plug itself. And then I have init.vim. And we currently just have one plugin installed, right? Now, if I want to install more plugins, and if you go on to GitHub and look at my DOF files, you can see I have plenty of other plugins installed. The first step is like, okay, I have a problem and I wanna solve it with a plugin. Let me go find a plugin to uh, install. And let me quit this. Now with NeoVim, you not only gain access to all the Vim plugins, but you gain access to NeoVim specific plugins as well. So the first question is, okay, uh, if I want to install a plugin and I want to be NeoVim specific, how do I know that it's NeoVim specific? There's not really, um, there's not, I don't think there's like a standard per se, but uh, you know, I found that uh, there's ways of identifying. So this is a popular plugin called Telescope. And if you look at the name of the repository, it's telescope.nvim. Now, .nvim obviously signifies NeoVim, so this is clearly a plugin that's been written for NeoVim. And you can also see in the About section, all Lua, all the time. So Lua is this new concept that I wanted to introduce, and this entire video is pretty much gonna be centered around Lua. So what is Lua? Lua is a programming language. It is uh, on its own, it has, you know, it's not created for NeoVim, but NeoVim actually bundles Lua into, uh, I, I believe it's bundled within NeoVim when you install it. And this allows NeoVim to kind of expose like uh, some integrations with the Lua programming language, give some APIs to interact with Vim. And uh, it's relatively small. It's not that difficult to learn. I found that just like exploring the plugin ecosystem and working with configurations has been a great way to learn how to write Lua code. Um, but at this point, there are a ton of plugins popping up, just like Telescope. You know, here's another one called NVim Tree. This one's ends in .lua, but you can see it says a file explorer tree for NeoVim written in Lua. This is in contrast to a very popular file explorer plugin written for Vim, a tree explorer plugin for Vim called NerdTree. And NerdTree has 16,000 stars, right? So if you say, I really want a file explorer in my Vim, setup and you're on NeoVim, you can absolutely install NerdTree. There's no uh, reason why you why you don't have to. Um, or you can install NVimTree. Now the inverse is not true. If I'm a Vim user and not a NeoVim user, and I want a file explorer, I can't come to NVimTree and install it. It's just not meant for traditional Vim. So you gain access to both the backwards compatible Vim plugins and the NeoVim specific ones. And the approach that I have taken when installing plugins is that one of the first considerations I make is, is this plugin NeoVim specific? Is it written in Lua? And uh, this automatically cuts out a lot of the plugin options that I have. But the reason I've taken this approach is, number one, I have this weird fascination with converting all of my configuration to Lua eventually, uh, and we are gonna get there. Um, but number two, I like staying as close to the NeoVim ecosystem as possible. 
Now, this doesn't mean I would never use a Vim specific plugin. For instance, uh, if you are familiar with Vim Fugitive, it is a very popular plugin for Git. Uh, it's a Git integration plugin for Vim. It was written for Vim, but I can use it as a NeoVim user, and I do. Um, there's just nothing out there that is better that's NeoVim specific. Uh, but that's actually one of the few Vim, uh, traditional Vim plugins I use. Everything else is pretty much a NeoVim plugin, and I like it for reasons such as, uh, you know, their plugins are written in Lua, which means I can configure them in Lua. And uh, that is what this video is all about. So the consideration, uh, the considerations I make when I install a plugin, obviously, is the plugin good? Is it going to solve my problem? Was it uh, written specifically for NeoVim? Is it in Lua? Can I configure it in Lua? Um, and how active is that, that plugin maintained? So if you're new to NeoVim and you followed that previous video, then you have an init.vim file, you may not have anything else. Um, and so this is where I kind of want to go at this point is kind of introduce, all right, I'm at this point where I want to install plugins, but how do I configure them and where do I put those configurations? Now there's a great document on GitHub called NVim Lua Guide, and it walks you through sort of like, uh, it gives you a, a bunch of links to kind of learn Lua the programming language, which I don't totally recommend at this point. Um, but it goes on, um, you know, some standards on how to structure your configuration in Lua, where you would put things, how, how you would use things. Um, specifically, you know, there's a section called where to put Lua files. There are a lot of people that are converting their init.vim to init.lua. We will do that eventually, but that's not what this video is about. Um, what this video is mainly about is this section right here called modules. Now I'll link this NVim Lua guide in the description, but I really want to hammer home this concept because it's super important if you want to start installing uh, Lua uh, plug or plugins that were written in Lua can be configured in Lua. And it's this concept of a Lua directory. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm gonna ls my nvim directory. Obviously, this is all we have right now. I wanna make a Lua folder. So I'm gonna make a Lua folder here, and then if I list out this directory again, you can see I have a Lua folder. Now, the Lua folder uh, is going to be in your runtime path, so when you require files, vim will look, or neovim will look in this Lua folder. So it's sort of a standard. Um, now, it says Lua modules are found inside a Lua folder in your runtime path. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you've installed the telescope plugin and you want to configure it, you can create a telescope.lua file and place it in this Lua directory and then require it and you're good to go. That's, base, that's the general idea, but there is a caveat. There is a catch to all of this. If I go back to NVim Lua guide, in this module section, if I scroll down a little bit, there's a tips section and it talks about namespace cl uh, clashes and this is a super important concept and why i wanted to make this video i i've been pouring through github repositories and people's dot files over the course of the last few weeks i find them on reddit discourse whatever and a lot of people follow this rule of having a namespace directory in your lua file but there's also people who don't uh, and the namespace file uh, directory is really important and I kind of illustrate why. So inside of .config nvim, we know I have a Lua folder, so I'll cd into that. And then this Lua folder is empty. This is where you want to put your namespace. Um, so I'm going to make a directory, and I'm just going to name it after my GitHub handle, and then I'll cd into that. So now where I'm at, I'm in .config slash nvim slash Lua slash jqeez. So this is my namespace directory. And inside of this directory is where I'm going to put all of my configuration files for all the Lua plugins that I install. Um, so if I install Telescope and I want to configure it, I can create telescope.lua. If I install nvim tree and I want to configure it, I can create nvim tree.lua. And then inside of init.vim, I can require all of these files, right? Um, so let's let's kind of do this with Telescope as an example, and I'll show you why namespacing is so critical. So uh, Nate, uh, let's go ahead and install Telescope. I'm in the repository. I will come down here to the installation. We're using Vim Plug currently, uh, which is kind of ironic actually, because I just went on a soapbox about staying close to the NeoVim ecosystem. And Vim Plug was written for Vim when I could be using Packer, um, which I am considering at the moment. In fact, I'm in the process, but 
uh, this video is still, that's not relevant to this video. So, all right, I'm gonna take these two, uh, this, these two lines. So I wanna install Telescope and it has a dependency on another plugin called Planary. So I'll copy that. I'm gonna go back into my init.vim and then I'm gonna go to here and paste that in. So now not only do we have our uh, color scheme, but we have Planary and we have Telescope, great. So I'll save that and then I will source this uh, file and then I'll run plug install. If you r recall in the last video, Vimplug gives you a bunch of these uh, you know, commands and, and running plug install allows you to install plugins. I've done this uh, already, so I have these plugins installed. Great, okay, I'm out, I'm out of Vimplug. Now I've installed Telescope, I wanna configure it, right? So I'm gonna go into my Lua directory and then I'm going to go into my namespace directory and inside of that directory, it's empty. So I'm gonna create a telescope.lua. And at this point, um, we can just put the bare minimum. So in the telescope.nvim repository, there's a customization section. And the bare minimum is just a require with a call to setup, and that's it, right? I'm not doing anything special. I'm not using any of these options. I'm just calling require telescope.setup, and that's it. Now, this is the first uh, kind of introduction to this require script, which is uh, in Lua, you're requiring a Lua module. And because we've installed Telescope, we can require it like so. I'm gonna go back to my uh, nvim directory and I'm going to open init.vim. If I go below my plugin definitions, at this point, I can start requiring my configuration, right? So I'll just say require plugin configs. Um, I only have one configuration right now, it's telescope. So inside of a .vim file, you can use a Lua call. I don't actually, let's see, if I run hlua, the Lua 5.1 language is built in and always available. Try this command to get an idea of what lurks beneath. So you see, this is the command prompt and then Lua, but because I'm in the vim file, I can just use Lua directory. I don't, uh, directly, I don't have to do this, right? So I'll say Lua require, and this is where namespace collisions become a thing. Uh, because I have a namespace directory inside of a Lua folder, I don't have to do Lua uh, namespace and then you know plugin.lua. I can just use namespace, which in my case is Jake Weiss, and then slash telescope. Now, not only do you get to use dot, uh, the forward slash, but you can actually do a period as well. So I use the dot. Um, dot telescope, right? And so if I do this and I source it, I should have the ability to use telescope now, you know, find files. Okay, cool. So telescope is working. Uh, but let's say I didn't have that namespace and I, instead of putting telescope.lua inside of my namespace directory, I just put it inside of the Lua directory. Well, then I'd be requiring telescope. And at that point, NeoVim doesn't know, do I want that that telescope file that you defined or the one that's defined in the plugin. And that's where namespacing becomes really important. Um, so I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna save that and close it. And I'm gonna go into Lua in the Lua folder. We'll list it out. So we still have our, our namespace directory. Now to illustrate this a little bit more, you know, if I created a telescope.lua file here and I didn't have my namespace directory, then the way to require that would be, you know, require telescope, right? Because you never have to write Lua first. It's a, a given because Lua is in the run, the Lua folder is in the runtime path. Um, so let me just remove telescope.lua. And I'm gonna go into the namespace directory. Uh, you know, obviously this isn't gonna be a, a video about setting up telescope. It's sort of just illustrating how to approach setting up uh, Lua based plugins in general, uh, but we can take one more step here and that is to, uh, let me go back to the init.vim. So instead of instead of just writing Lua require uh, jqweiss.telescope, what if we had, you know, Lua require jqweiss.nvim tree or Lua require jqweiss.color scheme, some color scheme, right? Uh, I can't spell. Uh, this is kind of annoying. It would be nice if I could just write this once and bring in all of those plugins, and we can absolutely do that. 
instead of writing the namespace directory and the name of the configuration file, we can just require the namespace. But in order for this to work, and I, again, I'm not saving this, so let me just, I'll undo all that, and I'll just quit the file. I'm not gonna save that. Um, in order for that to work, you need to go into the namespace directory, and you need to create an init.lua file. So if you're from, you know, I'm, I spend most of my life in JavaScript land. So uh, you can think of init.lua as uh, init.index.js. Um, if you have a directory and that directory has an init.lua file, then just requiring the directory is like requiring the init.lua file. Uh, so inside of init.lua, I can just write the namespace directory slash telescope like this. And now inside of the namespace directory, you have telescope and you have init.lua. And in a, a init inside of init.lua, you're requiring this guy or gal. And uh, we'll go back. And then inside of init.vim, we will go here. Instead of lua required jquies.telescope, we will just lua required jquies. And everything still works, right? So I'm gonna go into that, that namespace directory. I wanna demonstrate one more thing. So um, let's see, init.lua is what we wanna do. And uh, some of you might say, well, Jake, why do I have to write the namespace directory if I'm in it? Remember that when you are using this require statement, uh, NeoVim and Lua, they're looking in your runtime path for this file path. Uh, and Lua is in your file path, so you don't have to explicitly declare it. And again, this is another great example of why namespaces are so important because if you didn't have it and you just did this, well then what are you requiring now? Are you requiring the telescope plugin or are you requiring your custom telescope configuration? So yeah, that's one way to think about it. Now this isn't the only way to set up your plugins. Uh, Vim plugins, uh, Lua plugins, we actually have a, a sort of a folder that you can put in the NVim directory called plugin. And so if I list out the NVim directory now, I have this plugin file uh, folder. And if I go there, you know, I can make a telescope.lua as well and, you know, do all the things. Um, and then this, any file in this plugin directory will actually be required automatically. Uh, it's something I'm thinking about, but in the meantime, I kind of like having all of my configuration in the same place. Um, and so I'm pursuing this Lua directory a little bit more, but that is where I'm at in terms of, of setting up my plugins. And uh, in the next video, I'm gonna go down the list of all the cool plugins I've been working with, including Telescope and how we set those up. So if you're interested in that, let me clean up some of the mess I've made here. So we don't want that plugin directory. And then we can go in this Lua and everything's good here. So yeah, we have this namespace directory now and inside of telescope.lua, we're not doing anything cool. So in the next video, we'll do some cool shit. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one.